Welcome to the Fish Nerds. I'm Clay, licensed New Hampshire fishing guide and your host of the Fish Nerds podcast, and I'm super happy to be here today. This episode is the fourth in our series on how to become a fishing guide, and I'm happy to bring you along on my journey into making a living, or at least partial living, in the fishing industry. It's harder than I thought. Um, this episode is brought to you by our friends at New Hampshire Outdoor Learning Center. They offer tons of great outdoor certifications. Uh, I went to guy school there, and there's no chance I would have become a guide without their help. Scott Jackson really understands the business, and we appreciate them. So that's New Hampshire Outdoor Learning Center, and you can find links to that at fishnerds.com. Okay, so originally we were going to make this a simple four-part series. It would be super easy. <laughs> Turns out it's not. It's way complicated. So as we dig in the material, I'm growing the business and find it's much more difficult than I could have ever imagined. I'm going to add more episodes onto this series of becoming a licensed fishing guide. I- ideas for the future include, but are not limited to, the expenses of guiding. Guiding is stupid expensive. I keep spending money. I'm not making any money. That's bad. Uh, how to become a pro staff, how to get sponsored, uh, how to market the podcast, and the one that surprised me most, the politics of guiding. Turns out other fishing guides are very touchy, uh, and we want to make sure that we are staying friends with our friends and not uh, creating problems where we don't need them. Uh, and it's, it's amazing, um, I guess like any business, people worry about what you're doing, they're concerned about competition. Um, One of the things, kind of my philosophy is I don't see other guys as competitive or as competition. I see them all as potential partners. And I I can't imagine in this, especially in ice fishing, where there's only a handful in the entire state doing it, where uh, that would be problematic. But it turns out it could be. And we'll talk about all that stuff. I'm going to be leaning on other guides in New Hampshire and Maine and across the country to kind of share their stories and help us kind of dig into all this material as we go. If you if there's something you want to know about guiding, uh, you know, drop me an email, clay at fishnerds.com, and we'll include it as part of the show. Uh, if you have a perspective you want to share and you want to come on the show, drop me an email, and we'll have you on the show. We need uh, always need more people sharing information with us. Uh, that way we can grow and learn. So, here we are. My very first ice fishing trip. i got to tell you, the night before... It was December 31st. It was a January 1st trip, New Year's Eve. I said, okay, to my wife, wife, I'm going to bed early. I'm not going to make it till midnight. I have an ice fishing trip in the morning. I have to leave. And I thought I would go to sleep early and leave the trip. Turns out that's impossible with your first day at that kind of job. So I was up all night thinking about, oh, my God, oh, my God, what if we don't catch any fish? So my client, my first client, was Michael Crooker, who happens to be a longtime Fish Nerd supporter, fan of the podcast, and he was determined to be my first guest. So uh, a little bit of pressure off there because I kind of knew him, but he also wanted me to take him to uh, Silver Lake to go fishing. So our first meeting spot was supposed to be at a boat ramp on Silver Lake, and when I got there, I noticed there was already a handful of people fishing uh, for rainbow trout in the shallows there. And I didn't want to crowd them or be anywhere near them anyway. I kind of wanted to have the pressure of people watching me screw up not being right there. So Michael and I headed up to a different part of the lake where it was um, fishy enough. Uh, The reason I chose uh, this spot was there was a couple reasons. One, my snowmobile broke and we could not drive on the ice. Uh, So we had to have a walk on trip. The snow on, on the on the ice was about a foot deep with about five inches of slush and about seven inches of ice. So walking around was challenging. So it had to be a relatively easy spot. The other reason I chose this spot was five years ago while ice fishing there, I saw a, um, using an underwater video camera, I saw a lake trout on camera. And and so there was some hope there. Um, Now, I have been fishing Silver Lake for, gosh, eight or nine years. And I have never had a good day fishing on Silver Lake. I've had great days floating in a boat and hanging out in sunshine on the ice, but actually catching fish, uh, not super good. Uh, but anyway, here we were, ready to go. I told Michael that he was not going to catch any fish, uh, and I was going to take his money anyway. Uh, did, did I mention I, I hate Silver Lake? 
ClayGrowsFishNerds.com. We're on Silver Lake guiding first trip. You know that you're out in the Silver Lake hell. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to hell fishing. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a little, little bit. Now it's fun to catch a fish while we're doing this too. Right. So if you could catch a fish, that would oh, that'd be, helpful. be tremendous. It would be good for business. <laughs> All right. So, Michael Crooker, right? Yep. Am I saying it right? I've been saying it for months. Yeah, no, you're one of the few that actually says it right. Because I can read. Uh, Mike is from Pelham, and Mike heard me talk about guide school on the podcast and wanted to be the first first client. So Mike called me about 25 times saying, when's your first trip? When's your first trip? When's your first trip? And uh, it's January 1st now. Happy New Year. And we are the first people jigging on Silver Lake. There are other people fishing, but we don't want with jigging rods. And there's not many people out here. Right now, where we're sitting, we're the only ones we can see. I can't see a single person yeah. out here today. And Mike called me up and said, I want to fish Silver Lake for whitefish and, uh, and, 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 uh, brook trout. And, uh, what kind of trout are we catching? Lake trout. And lake trout. We're not catching anything. And I said, <laughs> and I said, I'm not a lake trout guy and I hate Silver Lake. He said, and then he said, great, let's go hate fishing. So he gave me money and we're hate fishing. If you guys want to hate fish with me, just uh, go to fishnurse.com and call me. I'll take you hate fishing. Are you having fun so far? At least he makes it a good time. It's absolutely fun. Yeah. So we're we're just jigging. We got a, and we got a couple of uh, traps out in uh, one in about two feet of water and one about uh, fifteen feet of water halfway down. We're using a sonar, and uh, we're not seeing much action on there. And we tested out the new uh, a new auger today. We're using a electric auger with a drill plate on it and a, a and a, a power drill on it. And uh, we've made a ton of holes. And 10, 15 holes already in a matter of five minutes. Yeah, if, if you need to know the brand, it's a Nils auger with a clam drill plate and a DeWalt uh, drill on it. Um, but they're not paying us, so <laughs> we're not going to say much about those guys. But it works really great. <laughs> really, really well. Yeah. So what's your favorite fish to catch through the ice? It's got to be lake trout. Lake trout. So um, if we get a Silver Lake lake trout today, that would be a minor miracle. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no fish in here anyway. There's no. This is... <laughs> This is a terrible place. So, uh, and where do you usually fish? Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. So you go all the way there to fish? Do you go I, do day trips up there? I do a couple day trips a year through the ice and a couple couple weekends a year mm -hmm. with uh, my best friend. We go up there religiously every year ice fishing. And we've got it pretty well figured out. And for the most part, we focus just on uh, cusk and lake trout. Yeah, now we do have cusk opportunity here today as well, so... That'll be exciting. Yeah, but I, I'm, again, I'm not. I'm hopeful because I fishing and fishing is an act of hope. But I'm not confident. <laughs> uh, but we will catch fish today. We're gonna find them. Uh, and just so you know, the ice conditions we're looking at about seven, eight inches of ice, plenty of ice, which is nice. Uh, covered with about three inches of water and slush, <laughs> and about eight inches of snow. So walking is difficult. Pulling a sled is impossible, and my snowmobile is is broken. So we are. We are having a foot trip today. <laughs> we're, we're on Silver Lake, that's why. Yeah, Silver Lake's out to get us. I've seen worse. <laughs> At least it's warm out. It's great. It's yeah. got to be 20 degrees, 25 degrees. Yeah, it was supposed to be mid-30s today, sunny, just light wind. That'll be nice. So, by the way, you know what that fuzzy thing's called? <sighs> All right, we're going to switch. We're going to keep drilling. You're going to keep drilling? Mm-hmm. I'm going to switch out to something a little heavier. So you can get down faster? Yeah, I don't like the action I'm getting. I have too much slack in my line as I uh, try and jig, so. Yeah. See, this is, this is what the uh, Nils auger sounds like. That's a hole. Great inch size. That's it. <laughs> Nothing to it. So now, a little experience, a couple of fish on the ice. Uh, my confidence is growing. We took a little break from fishing to collect a little more audio. Uh, so, Clay Groves here. We're still on our first ice fishing adventure. The noise you hear in the background is a propane cooker making us some nice steak tips for breakfast. Like, how have we done so far? We've done awesome. Clay got his personal best uh, yellow perch through the ice this morning. I got a yellow perch on the biggest jig head. <laughs> You're not supposed to catch perch on things that big. But it was well some... over an ounce bucktail. <laughs> yeah. And you caught a lake trout. I caught a nice laker. That I guided you to. That's right. I yeah. got the best guide in New Hampshire. The best, Fish Nerds Guide Service. The best uh, Silver Lake guide <laughs> yeah. anyway. The only one. Definitely the best guide on Silver Lake right now. At least today. <laughs> <laughs> Once this gets out and they realize there's one laker in the lake, 
everyone's going to want to come out and do it. But uh, we're having a good time. The weather is absolutely perfect. I was really concerned because the snow is so deep, we can't carry the big sled out. But uh, with it being almost what, 35, 40 degrees it's out. It's got to be. Light wind, sunny. We couldn't ask for anything better than this. Um, and the fish are they're not biting okay. like crazy. They're out. I'm seeing them on the flasher. But we're, we're, we are seeing some fish, and we're going to... Uh, eat some food and then take a big walk across the lake to try and find some better fish. And the auger is working. The auger is working. Flashers awesome. are working. So, yeah, it's all good. What are you looking at? I'm looking at how far away that island is through this snow. We've got, we've got snowshoes. <laughs> you want an adventure. Oh, it's an you're adventure. Gonna, you'll go home tired. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> going to fish my way home. Yeah. But we'll go out for fun another time, just fishing for fun. Oh, yeah. With a snowmobile. That'll be interesting. Yeah. All in all, we had a, a good day. I counted nine Lakers for Mike and a handful for myself. All were released. Uh, Mike called in to the Fish Nerds hotline to recap. By the way, I cannot begin to thank Mike enough. Uh, it means a ton to me that he wanted to be my very first client. Uh, and since then, I've, I've led you know, a handful of more trips. Uh, all have, I think, been successful. None have gone the way I expected. And, and I'm learning a ton. Again, Mike, thank you so much. Hey, Fish Nerds. This is Mike Crooker. I just figured I'd give a call in to uh, report back on my trip that I took with the Fish Nerds Guide Service. Um, I was actually Clay's first guide, uh, first client, and he asked me where I wanted to fish. I've been fishing my whole life, so catching volumes of fish wasn't really quite a priority for me. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to go hate fishing on Silver Lake because Silver Lake has plagued the fish nerds for years. Well, we finally, Clay and I finally broke that curse. Um, he was he was a great guide. He stayed in contact me, with me for a couple of weeks before we actually went out. And he talked to me about my abilities, my expectations for the trip, and he was actually he was great about it. And um, when we finally met to go out in the ice, he sat me down. We had a quick conversation for ice safety and what to do if I fell in or if he fell in. And uh, when we were about to actually go out on the ice where we had planned on fishing, there was a bunch of people out there fishing, and it was pretty tight, and we didn't really want to encroach on anybody. So we actually moved to a different bay on the lake. And it was actually a really smart move from him. We ended up catching 12 lake trout first thing in the by probably eight o'clock and nine o'clock in the afternoon we already had half a dozen fish um he was really organized he had tons of gear he was ready to go i mean he had the heater the hut and all that jazz we didn't end up using it because it was beautiful out he even brought snowshoes if we decided to go on an adventure across the lake um he brought plenty of coffee which I drank all of, and uh, we actually grilled some steak out in the ice, and he caught a nice little yellow perch that he ended up filleting right on the ice, and we ate that as well. Uh, I have absolutely zero complaints with it. It was actually one of the best ice tripping, ice fishing trips I've ever taken, so I recommend it to anybody. All right, so after that successful trip, my confidence was rising high. I was like, wow, man, I am awesome. I can catch fish on Silver Lake. So Rich Collins, a friend of mine and Fish Nerds Fly fishing correspondent, says, all right, Clay, show me these fish. Now, Rich is, I call him my banana, like banana on a boat. Bad luck. He is bad mojo, man. He is just not good to be around when you want to catch uh, good fish. Um but we chatted, we grabbed my recording equipment, we took the snow machine out, which I had fixed, and we went out in the lake, and it was really cold out, like five degrees out. It was windy, and nothing worked out the way we thought it was. We ended up not finding any fish, so we turned on the recording equipment. Um, I got a little bit of audio, which I'll play for you. Uh, and while I was recording, my father-in-law called in to talk a little bit about one of our recent protesters. Um, actually, my only protester, one person a local uh, animal rights affiliate uh, <laughs> person who thinks that if you are a fisherman, you cannot be a good human being. Uh, and my father-in-law called in to talk about that a little bit. So here's my conversation with uh, Rich Collins and Scott, 
my father-in-law. All right. The LEDs are freezing. <laughs> so this, hopefully we're recording. Uh, ClayGrovesFishners.com here with Rich Collins, our fly fishing <laughs> correspondent. Uh, nothing is working right. <laughs> Um, we have been ice fishing on the most horrible lake in New Hampshire, Silver Lake. Are we having a good time? Which was um, was a good lake for a little while. It had, had, until, had five until... good days on it. Now we hate this goddamn place again. Uh, it might be me, yeah. although I don't think so. But uh, no, it's 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 the lake. It's a horrible place. Don't ever come here. If you're gonna <laughs> hire me for a guide. Say anywhere you want to go is fine except for Silver Lake. <laughs> Although it's becoming a cult status to get skunked on this lake, I think so. Uh, I think so. Although this is my, I've been out five days this week and this is the first uh, day we've had that hasn't been good. We've been getting lake trout and rainbow trout and big jumbo yellow perch and I'm guiding out here tomorrow and I'm already not looking forward to it. <laughs> not to say that it's not good, it's just a bit cold. It's yeah. what was what, six degrees this morning? Or? Uh, it was negative five when I loaded the truck. <laughs> This morning, I adds, loaded it with confidence. <laughs> adds a little element of uh, yeah. surprise when you're actually cold and not catching fish. Right. So. On the upside, the snowmobile works still. The snowmobile but worked. The ice shanty has failed. Uh, we are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> the heat is working hard, but uh, it's just so freaking cold out. <laughs> the tent shelter failed. The, uh, uh, the mic boom. <laughs> oh, 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 fish biting. Oh, oh, oh. pull it up. Set the hook. There's nothing there. You guys set the hook when they bite. It's just nibbling. You've got to react. That one. Oh. Hey. Oh, I got, I lost them. I got tangled in my friggin' cord. The fish are here. What a, that was like a perch. I don't care. Put it back down. Oh, I think he took the grub. Yeah, put another grub on there. They school up. Oh. There was a fish. I felt him. Ah, oh, race! I bet the recording clip is now failing now that we're catching fish. Well, I did see the battery like, completely die. Yeah, it's done. We'll see. I'm taking the headphones off. <laughs> it's still recording. Oh, so, they, so, so there's actually some moments of pleasure. Dude, that was fucking... You gotta react when you can't let them just chew on your stuff. I know, but the way he was hitting, I don't know how he was, um... He was just tapping it. Yeah, that's, they're subtle. Oh, my line's all frozen. I can't get it out of my freaking rail. Is that the laker that's... Or is that... What's that? A perch? That's a perch. Yeah. A laker. That little jig, you'd be... Well, that's why I was like, perch. Hey, look. Let's not get skunked. Look, there are perch down here. They're hungry. My line's so cold, it's not coming off the reel. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're on the lake. We just missed a flurry of... Activity. First activity we've had all day. We've seen on the flash here fish, but uh, I just now got hungry. So I didn't see anything on the flash or? I did. Oh. But we weren't looking at it that closely. I'm all tangled. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far we're both alive, but everything that has gone wrong sort of can, can. and will. And will, yeah. And this is, holy smokes. <laughs> How did lines, that happen? Our line froze. I'm tangled in my line like you wouldn't believe. Ah. I do have warm coffee. Yeah, well, hey. <laughs> There's that. And I just missed a fish. Again? No. I'm still thinking about the, the uh -huh. paralysis of, like, my line actually getting tapped on. <laughs> I know, you froze. Like, I got something going on here. <laughs> just sitting there watching your line move. <laughs> I'm waiting like, for the rod to, like, you gotta, bend over. you got to react. I'm going to give you a little kid bopper again. Still working? I can't tell. The, the LEDs aren't moving anymore because it's so frozen. <laughs> but we'll see. Dude, I got a, like an adrenaline rush. I was so excited. <laughs> Oh, I have one on too, and I got tangled in my cord from my microphone. Where would they go? They'll come back. Come on back. I thought you chummed. Oh, my phone is ringing. It's been. It is probably gonna. You guys catching it? Oh, That's... I'm busy. My in-laws. Hello. 
Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that's Laura Slit is her real name. She can't use her real name on Facebook because she got banned for threatening uh, <laughs> businesses. Yeah. No. What did he say? Oh, no, it was it a broccoli or a spaghetti? You know, broccoli in the supermarket. What is it seeing naked as you spray cold mist on it? <laughs> So do I. She really is a nut. Yeah. <laughs> She's a total nut. She's the uh, videographer for the uh, SAU 9 uh, school board meeting. So she corners me every month or so when I go to meetings and tells me um, about veganism and how good it is. Yeah. But she doesn't call me bad names to my face. Only online does she call me Dracula or other things. <laughs> so, Dracula. Yeah, she called me Dracula. So, Scott, I'm fishing with my friend Rich right now. We're on, you're on speakerphone. Hi, Scott. Oh, you're on you're out fishing now? Yeah, I got a snowmobile on the lake. Are those fish? Those oh, wait a minute. Uh, um, is today your gig? Your second gig? No, tomorrow. I'm just, we're pre-fishing today and we are not catching any fish. It's terrible. Where are you? <laughs> Silver Lake. I hate this lake. This lake it's, sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> no one's... Is the snowmobile up and ready to go? It's on the lake with us. Yep. Now it is? Yeah. How's it working? Uh, works pretty good. Needs a new fuel pump. I have really? my, yeah, I have a mechanic go through it, and uh, if if you don't turn the fuel valve off, it pumps fuel out all night long. So, just make sure we turn the fuel valve off, but he's going to put a new fuel pump in it for me next week. It'll be pretty cheap. Pumps fuel pump out where, Clay? Uh, into the exhaust. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw your friend Dick this morning who sold it to me. I didn't tell him about it. <laughs> it's fine. He's very He was very proud to see it on the ice. He came out and said hi. Yeah, I know. I'm learning. A lot of people. That guy online is rich. He's sitting next to me. He's a yeah. scoundrel. <laughs> <laughs> so are you in the hot spot? No, no. I wish I'm, we were. <laughs> I'm the cold spot. I'm yeah. the... Now, part of being a fishing guide is doing seminars. Now, I've been doing seminars. We didn't call them that. We called them workshops for for years. Uh, in 2011, I did the first. Um, I did a first ice fishing seminar, kind of an updated modern ice fishing seminar at the uh, Stratton Public Library, and then I was scheduled to do one at the Conway Public Library. We changed it to the, uh, we kept calling it the Mount Washington Valley Fishing Seminar to highlight ice fishing in the Mount Washington Valley, uh, and it went really well. Uh, 18 people showed up. I got a little audio from that, and I actually ended up uh, booking two trips um, out of this. Now, you'll hear Vinny Maturo in this a little bit. Vinny is uh, going to be my partner in the guide service once he gets licensed. Right now, he is kind of a silent partner. Uh, well, actually, he's kind of always silent, <laughs> but um, he's a quiet guy, good fisherman, and he's going to help me with this business once he gets his license. Uh, and overall, by the way, we got good evaluations, uh, except for one person wrote a negative evaluation and said that uh, the kids, my kids, were annoying. And it was me. I wrote. I wrote that evaluation. So, uh, hi. So I'm Clay Grubbs. This is Vinny Maturo. We uh, are owners of the Fish Nerds Guide Service. We're the only guide service operating in the Mount Washington Valley. Uh, and our, this is our first year in operation. In fact, our first trip came out this past Sunday. We did our very first trip. It was on Silver Lake for lake trout. Um, it just kind of background. I also make what's called the Fish Nerds Podcast, a nationally popular um, show on iTunes throughout the world. And, and um, you're, just so you know, uh, if you speak tonight, you're being recorded, and it may be used in that podcast. No images are going to be used. Uh, and if you don't want to be heard, uh, don't talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's just your voice is being heard anyway, so it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. Um, but anyway, so you can find all that at fishnerds.com, the podcast, the fishing guide service, all that sort of thing. And one of the things we noticed fishing around the Mount Washington Valley is that people don't realize that the fishing is great here all year. 
and there's always something happening with fishing in the Mount Washington Valley. And people drive from here to other places to catch fish that live here. And we want more people catching fish here, maybe even hiring us to take them and show them where they do it. But the fish are here. And so we're going to go through some of the uh, techniques and tricks for catching fish around here. We're going to talk about some of the older style of fishing and then bring you into the new modern world of ice fishing and show you some really great new technology that's going to help you catch more fish and be safer. Uh, than, than ever before. But before I begin, I want to get a barometer of the room and make sure that I'm not speaking to people who already know everything. Uh, because if that's the case, we can always go fishing and I'm going to skip this whole thing. Um, <laughs> so I didn't get credit for it, but there it is. Um, but on the ice, even if you're with a guide, the only person responsible for your safety at any one time is you. Because if you're with a guide or with someone else who knows stuff and they're working on a fishing thing and you walk 40 feet away and fall in, you walked 40 feet away and fell in. Um, so a guy will help you and, and kind of direct you what's safe and what's not safe, but you need to control your own body, even if you're a little kid on the ice, right? Like Colin? me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even especially you. I'm not allowed walking in holes, I'm just frozen over. Right, fresh holes, bad news. Do I hit the button? Uh, so, when we're testing ice, couple of guidelines. You should not go uh, Don't use common sense. Everyone says, oh, use some common sense in the ice. Common sense is dumb. Um, people don't know stuff. Uh, you check the ice. It's because you see a bunch of people out there. I saw some yahoos on Conway Lake three weeks ago driving snowmobiles and the ice was an inch and a half thick. Those guys, if I used my common sense, I would do what the common person was doing. I would have got my snowmobile and gone out there. If I stopped the fish, I would have broke the law because it's too fat lake. But also, I would have uh, fallen through and been in trouble. So use your own sense. Check the ice. Um, chip was and just when you think the show is over, I got a call from Dave Wilson. Dave is the inventor of a new device called the Pocket Rod Rest. And he said, hey, Clay, can you meet me at a coffee shop so I can show you my stuff? We are totally recording now, right now. So. ClayGrovesFishNerds.com. Hanging out with Dave Wilson. Dave is the inventor of the pocket rod rest. And this is our second try at making this recording because I screwed up the text. So my apologies for, for that. But uh, this is a little device you stick in your pocket and you rest your fishing rod on it. We'll do a full demonstration for it. But I want to actually talk to Dave and I want to find out how you came up with this idea. I love these simple ideas. Uh, and, and these are the simple ideas, the ones that can make you the millions, right? So tell us, uh, tell us about it. Yeah, I got my, I got my fingers crossed on that. But um, yeah, I was fishing uh, one day and I landed a fish, and it was a feisty, small little schoolie on a treble hook type setup. Uh, long story short, but not that really long. Uh, uh, it hooked my finger and end up dropping my rod in the mud. The fish is going crazy. I have a hook in my finger. There's, it, you know, it's not really that when you're going fishing, you're really looking for. To calm yourself and have fun the challenge you know fishing's different for everybody but getting covered in blood and mud wasn't my idea of the best outing so after i cl cleaned myself up got the fish gone um you know i remember grabbing my rod and, and putting it like and resting it along my side and being like wow that'd be a pretty good fulcrum point that'd be a good point to rest something right. so it really started from there, and uh, that was about three or four years ago, and uh, I worked on it and chipped away while, that, while I was at a, uh, my old job, and uh, finally got to the point where it was requiring enough effort and time of mine that I, I wanted to bring it to more anglers. I thought that, uh, obviously, you know, um, tons of people can benefit from this product and as well as you know I could uh, you know be in just entrenched in the fishing lifestyle and meeting a bunch of cool um, fishing enthusiasts and anglers all over is really uh, you know is a heck of a lot better than what I had going for me before so if you know if I can bring this little tool and to the people and they enjoy it uh, that's unbelievably rewarding uh, when I just had a show and seeing people's reaction to this and seeing them like it and enjoy it um, is really more rewarding than actually physically having it in my hand. People, th their genuine reaction to it is really, really cool. And um, But to answer your question, yeah, I, th I just thought at one time fishing and needed to uh, come up with something that uh, could help us out. So it's, it's always those ideas. And everyone has that, like, i got a million di dollar idea. I've got this thing that's going to make me rich, or at least maybe I can make a living in this industry. Uh, 
and most of us never do a thing with those ideas. Um, I was talking to Vance Sawarski from the Line Cutters guys recently, and he's one of those guys who did the same as you. He had an idea, and he brought it all the way, and went on Shark Tank and the whole thing. Uh, it, so, like, you're a different kind of person than most. You're a total nerd because the nerds are the ones who dig in and go all the way with these ideas, and that makes you a fish nerd, which welcome to the fish nerd world. Uh, we're so excited to, you know, to see this product. And uh, more importantly, I want to kind of take us on your journey. I want to hear about, because the uh, product is, is pretty obvious. Once we see it, we'll see it in action a little bit. But I really want to go on the journey with you. You're married? Yes, I am. Okay. Oh, I said, try that again. You're married? Yes, I am. All right. And so what I want you to do is, is take me on this idea. You got go home. You say, hey, wife, I thought of something, and I'm a genius. And take me from there to market, if you can. All right. Well, it, it's it's <laughs> like anything else. Uh, you know, sales is, is up and down, whether you're selling something for somebody else. You have those ups and downs. Um, I have uh, been uh, beneficial enough to have support from my family, um, you know, but that's not to say that uh, this journey hasn't uh, has been easy. So, um, you know, I stuck with my other job pretty much as long as I as I could. Do you still do it? I do not. Um, and really, uh, honestly, that was a big driving force behind this. Uh, um, and I'm trying to be delicate here. No, no shot against anybody that does anything along those lines. But, you know, I, I had delusions of grandeur of what my career was going to be. And um, I, I just... I, yeah, my delusion. Yeah, my previous career with the big house and the, and all that type of stuff and and success and helping other people, getting you know throughout the process. And, and so I was kind of brought into the realm of big comp of big company corporate life, if you will. So um, that was a big driving force behind the pocket rod rest. I I, I kind of wanted to step out of line and uh, and do something on my own. I'm not looking to make billions of dollars. Uh, if I, like I said, if I could just get the bills paid and hang out with some anglers and and enjoy fishing that and and have watch other people enjoy fishing and help some in the process, that's really what it's all about for me. All right, so take what's the timeline? When did you come up with the idea, and how long did it take you to get to here? And where are we right now in the business? You might, if you don't mind sharing some information with us, like so, bring us on that journey. I want to know yep. how long from quitting your job. To I'm making a living, or I'm not quite there yet. That's okay too. That's yeah. real life. All right. So uh, I came up with this, and I, if I, uh, off the top of my head, I believe in August of 13, and uh, it took. I worked with a great gentleman up in Maine, and uh, he, you know, um, he helped in his uh, spare time, tinkering with this and working with me um, to, to fine tune the idea. So let's say uh, August of 13. And uh, millions of different little sketches and ideas, and I send this gentleman some I, uh, some concepts, and he sends me back some concepts. At the same time, you know, I'm trying to be very, very careful. I have no patent on this, and it's just an idea. And I, but I know it's a pretty good one. I've done Google searches. I've done that type of stuff. I haven't found any information regarding a product that exists like this. Oh, it is patented oh, now. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, no, it's patented now. I officially just uh, got it not too long ago. But anyway, so, yeah, uh, and I just I started working on it, and uh, I was with my company for a couple years, and in May of, uh, well, for, I was with them for almost 10 years, but while I was working on this, it was a couple years. And uh, in May of 15, it just got to a boiling point where I was just, I really wanted to take this and bring it to the people, and I just really had enough with where I was at. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to, to build, do my own thing. I, I'd grown up seeing my family be pretty successful going off on their own. And uh, I wanted to do the, try the same thing. And, I, you know, I, I do believe I have a million-dollar idea. If I didn't, I wouldn't have done this. And, uh, um, you know, if pretty much if you, you can use a fishing rod, you can use the pocket rod rest. It's not a niche product. It's not something where you need to have skill to use. Uh, you obviously get better at using it while you use it. Um, but, the, the, you know, it, it was a long, arduous process, and it was really difficult, and I'm not even close to done yet, and that's okay. But it's been rewarding, and it's been fulfilling. Um, which a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of, you know, people like frustration, but uh, knowing that I have this and, and, and just my 
desire to get it to the people is so strong, and I feel that once people see it, they're going to go nuts over this thing. So, I, and we can totally hear your energy, and we're excited for you. Um, I, I always get excited about all this stuff because I I always want to see everyone around me be successful. I think that we all in this industry, we all get success from each other, you know. And it, we all kind of come along in the same road, and especially you're from New Hampshire. This is made in Maine. I mean, this is close to home stuff. It's exciting for us, and, and I love that. Made in the USA. Did you start off like a 3D printing model and then go to a, a injection mold from there? I did. I, did I bring them? Uh, I did. I started out with 3D models. I actually have some here uh, I brought to show you. And, uh, yeah, I started out with 3D models, tinkering with them. You should have seen the first ones that were, that were much larger and, and then what, what we finally came up with. And, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a process to make sure that it held the pant. It was important for me for it to hold the pant with a certain amount of tension. I didn't want it to actually grab your pants, but I wanted the rod to be able to move with it so you could release fish and the, the rod's not, you know, super fastened to you. So there was a lot of, unfortunately, I had to do a lot of research and development just to make it perfect. Right, that's what I, I'm a fishing guide and I do a lot of uh, scouting, we call it. And yeah, it's yeah, just... It's it really it required a lot of uh, scouting or research and development to make sure that, that I had the product just right. I still still have a lot of more a lot more research and development to do. Uh, we, we never ends. <laughs> it's a never ending. And maybe a shark trip coming up in the future. Yeah. You never know. So uh, that's, it's really exciting. Um, so you're you're you're. Let me I'm let me ask some delicate questions, and you can answer whatever ones you want. Are you making a living from the pocket rod rest, or are you not at profit yet? I, I, Clay, I'm not at profit yet, and that's that's quite okay. And I don't I don't plan to be at it for a while. I mean, um, th that's I'm, I've rolled the dice, and the dice are starting to come up pretty good. Um, and it's all part of the process. When this does become profitable, the people that have been with me and and help manufacture the Gary Gagnons and uh, Wood and Companies of Maine, um, these are the people that uh, hopefully they're still standing with me and they're going to be with me to the end and th they're going to uh, come along with this ride with me. So um, you know, yeah, n not making money yet, but I'm planning on making some. All right, and so we're going to follow along and, and hope to see you kind of live your dream here. And I'm sure I'll see you at Expos in the future. Are you, you got any shows coming up soon? Yep, I have. Uh, we're at the Rhode Island Saltwater Show. Uh, I believe that's the 10th, 11th, 12th. I'm uh, attending a uh, Tackle Direct event on March 4th. And there's a couple local shows throughout February that I'll be at as well. And have you looked into putting this into like the Lucky Tackle Boxes, Mystery Tackle Boxes, and going on a Shark Tank and all those kind of traditional, new traditional roles? Uh, the Lucky Tackle Box and Mystery Tackle Box, those are people that I definitely want to reach out at. I wanted to make sure that I had a good you know, amount of inventory and I was ready to go. The first order is absolutely super important for me and people are going to get to know me and, and I think and build rapport, but I'm really looking forward to that second, third, and subsequent orders. And I want to make sure I can do it right the first time for these people. And uh, I believe I'm at that point and that's why I'm really pulling a full course press on getting this out to the people at, at the expos, sitting here with you. I just recently got a um, added on to the Hidden Collective website, which we spoke about briefly, which is a very cool uh, website and really marketplace for uh, you know small time people trying to get out there and get their products to, to the people that aren't in big box stores yet. So uh, it's a cool thing, and it's uh, you know for really grassroots type projects. Good. And just to explain this to our listeners, because this is an audio show, uh, it's it's a bent piece of plastic that fits in your pocket that your fishing rod rests on. There's not a lot more to talk about how it looks. You've got to check it out. At fishnerds.com, we'll have links on where you can purchase it. And, of course, all of our Facebook, we'll be sharing photos of these. And you've, we've got some of these to give away, and I'll have an upcoming uh, event where we'll give those away. We'll make a big deal about it for you. Uh, where can people buy it right now? Right now, the number one place I would tell you would be at tackledirect.com. Uh, just search Pocket Rod Rest. Uh, I also have it on my own personal website at www.pocketrodrest.com. Uh, however, I do uh, getting my traffic over to Tackle Direct as I want to support my uh, uh, bigger retailers. They're the first per people to pick me up. I appreciate the support, and I want to send as many sales to TackleDirect.com as I can. Uh, that's a fantastic. And Dave, thank you for coming on the show. And um, off, off of this, we'll do a little bit of a demonstration for the live feed here, okay? Great. Awesome. Thanks, Clay. Appreciate it. And I have a handful of these pocket rod rests to give away. Uh, and here's how you can get one. I need to know what annoys you most about other fisher people. What's your fishy pet peeve? 
You can leave that on the Fish Nerds hotline at 607-378-FISH, and I will send the first eight people who call in a pocket rod rest and a handful of effing decals. Uh, so I want to know, what bothers you most about fishing or other fisher people? Uh, is it, do, you have, do people fish too close to you? Do they cast over your lines? Do they fish with a technique you don't like? Do you hate fly fishermen? Do you hate spin castermen? How about worm killers? Do you hate people leave trash by the river? What is it that bothers you most about other fishermen? Leave your best rant. Rant. We want rants at 607-378-FISH, and we will incorporate that into uh, an upcoming episode. So that's it. You've listened to a couple of fish nerds when you could have been fishing. We would like to thank our families for supporting us while we podcast. Go on Fishing Quest and do all sorts of silly things that nerds do. If you would like to support the fish nerds, you can do one of two things. One, go to patreon.com forward slash fish nerds and throw a dollar in the hat. A dollar per episode. Four bucks a month helps keep this podcast going. Or you can book me for a fishing trip. Go to fishnerds.com for booking information. Special thanks to everyone who is part of this show. Uh, again, without you guys, we would, uh, we would not be here today. Uh, and until next time, follow the code of the fish nerds. Spawn early and often. Avoid free lunches with strings attached and swim against the current every chance you get. Thank you.